having us. And um, I just want to thank our amazing team of teachers from Ramsey for putting this together and being a part of this and for the partnership with Library Media Services. We have Pam Coomer here. Um, and so this is kind of our first step into spotlighting teachers for the amazing work that they're doing in NTI. Um, we are going to be focusing on the first three Wednesdays of December on um, really focusing in on instruction um, during NTI. And so um, we're so glad that Ramsey was ready to go today and get us started. We'll be looking at asynchronous versus synchronous engagement, dialogical opportunities, maximizing literacy opportunities, student engagement, discourse, all of those um, things that we know our students need. And so um, Ramsey, some of the best of the best in ELA in doing this. And so I can't wait um, for them to share with everyone um, how they are engaging their students in reading and writing. So thank you all again for your work um, and for being here. And I'll be managing the chat over on the digital learning channel page um, and they will be running the presentation from here. So as Suzanne mentioned, this is the, we will read and write through this 2020 presented by Morgan Compton, Jessica Gilkey, myself, Gina Shepard, all from Ramsey and Pam Coomer. We're excited to share these great things we're doing. The things we'll cover, and this is just a really short, quick glimpse of all the great things we have, but um, Morgan will start with encouraging independent reading at home, choice, volume, quality, and then uh, myself and my sixth grade PLC will go over encouraging writing and promoting student choice through NTI. And then Pam Coomer will go through some library digital reading resources. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, I'm going to be primarily talking about how we are tracking uh, independent reading online with our students. I'm Morgan Compton. I am the eighth grade language arts teacher at Ramsey Middle. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, so if you'll go into the next slide for me. Um, so I'm going to talk about three main components today uh, that we've looked at and incorporated in trying to get our students reading um, at home through this virtual process. The first is student choice and encouraging our students to read with the resources that they have and that we can offer. So we have encouraged kids to pick books from their homes or their libraries. And if they don't have that resource, we've encouraged digital resources as well. Um, the ones our group is mainly using is Teen Book Cloud, Mac and Via, and Sora. And I'll go over that a little more in detail in a minute. The next thing is we want volume. We want our kids reading regularly, even though we're not seeing them as frequently as we used to. So we are encouraging our students to read about 20 minutes a day, between 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and we're doing that in some creative different ways as well that I'll cover today. And then finally, student quality. We want to know that what they're reading um, is also connecting to our standards that we're teaching. And we want to have a way to assess that and give our kids feedback um, through rubrics and through different sources. So uh, if you'll go to the next slide for me. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is student choice. We all know the challenge of um, getting our kids access to the resources while they're at home. So of course, if kids have books at home that they already love, that's wonderful. But a lot of our students don't. So our school um, has pushed a couple different platforms, and I know the librarian later is going to talk about some digital resources that will be great for this. But I have found that narrowing it down to just a few and helping our kids really navigate those well has been the most successful. So the one we really love at our school has been Mac and Via. Our kids have access to that. They've really enjoyed it. Um, they can check out the books. They can have an audio book with the physical book they're reading. So that's been a really successful option. And we've taken our live lessons to demonstrate how to use these resources and help kids pick them out. We've done book scavenger hunts to get them engaged with it. Okay, another way to get them interested in the books is our weekly uh, book talks. We introduce new books by giving an overview or a snapshot of the book, and then we let them hop on the digital resource to see if they can find it or check it out to read it. And then we also want kids sharing about their choices um, in our live lessons. So on our Nearpods or our collaborative boards, we have students sharing out about their reading after they do it. So uh, if you'll go to the next slide, I've just got a couple examples of book talks. Keep going one more. 
Um, so this is an example of a book talk slide that we would just insert into our live lesson where you just give a brief overview or kind of like a trailer to a book and have kids see if this poses any questions to them and then have them go look for the book on these resources. Go ahead to the next one. This is another example of a book um, a lot of our students might be interested in, so we would give them this brief resource. Okay, go ahead to the next slide. So volume, um, how are we encouraging them to read lots of works um, over this time and not just little excerpts or things here or there in our live lesson? The biggest way we've done this is we designed a reading log to track their reading. Um, where they can see over time how much they're reading and they can give us information on page numbers and how long it's taking them to read the pages they're reading. So there's a link in this slide and it'll be posted afterwards to our reading log we design that is standards based. So every week they have a prompt that's connected to the standards. So an example of a prompt might be make a claim about how the setting of your book impacts your character. And they would read all week and they would record their pages read and they would then tell us at the end of the week how the setting impacted their character with quotes from their book. So it's giving us that quality content that we want, but it's also having kids be held accountable and tracking their reading. Um, another version of this log I've got on the side here on the slide is a reading log. Um, it's the same thing, just the prompts kind of blown up a little bit more. And we are using in this prompt the CEA writing concept that our whole school has adopted school-wide, where all of our students respond to their writing um, in paragraph form with a claim, evidence, and analysis. So that's been a huge help, is that across the board at Ramsey, all of our kids, we are pushing this writing in all content areas, and we have that um, unity in our school. Uh, and if you'll go on to the next slide for me. And then finally, quality. So we want our students to produce the quality work. And again, as I said, being unified as a school about our writing program and what we're pushing with that really helps all the kids to know this is the format of my writing. This is what my teachers are looking for online. This is an example of a rubric that we would use to score one of their reading log responses. So to get mastery, a student would make a claim uh, based on what the prompt was, the standards-based prompt. They would give evidence with correct citation from their books, and they've been doing this. Um, and then they would give an analysis. So if you'll go to the next slide, I have a student example of that. So this is an example of a student who has demonstrated mastery in this. This is one of my own students um, responding to our reading log. And you can see the quality of this work. They went in and they had their claim, the setting of the novel impacts the character. She said specifically Thomas because it helps to further the plot of the story. Then I have my student um, highlighting their evidence. So from their book, what evidence did they find of this? And then they have an analysis where they explain how that evidence proves their claim. So we use this model throughout our school, but it's also tied into our reading logs and it's how we're getting that quantity and quality. Um, and also briefly, I wanted to mention an alternative way that we are getting books into the hands of kids. And I'm gonna let Miss Howlett talk about that. Um, and that'll segue into her part as well because they've been reading some books uh, at home. Sure. Um, we in the sixth grade figured we needed an anchor text to um, have all the, the students reading it, the same book at the same time. So we encourage students to purchase a copy of A Monster Calls. And we've also provided a free PDF version that they could use. Um, because why not ask, you know, families to get involved in that way? They might want to and be eager to. So we've had success in asking them to get that book or to follow along with us in a whole class novel. And even though today we have separated reading and writing a little bit, it really is hard to separate them. We read and write through this kind of together, but we'll focus more on writing now. And we know that it's really important young people have stories to share and we want them to know, we wanna hear their stories. I think you get to know a student so well through their writing. And our first unit, we, we do all of our work in, 
in terms of units. So we're on our second unit now, but our first one was what is your our community story? And I'm all about the quality work indicators of being able to get a student to share their work with an audience beyond the classroom. So our first goal with that was to partner with Young Authors Greenhouse. Um, in there, we will write through this project and it's for anyone ages six to 18. And the topic of it was the pandemic or protests. And it's still going on now. So they'll still take your submissions until December 15th. But we loved giving students an opportunity to share what they thought about real world issues um, on a personal level in a way that would contribute to the community um, as a whole. And this link here on our presentation will take you to a free downloadable booklet of writing prompts and Ms. Gilkey later will show you how we use that. And so in this unit, to get them thinking about that writing, we went through presentations, getting them to reflect on what's been going on. Um, there's a little quote on here, it says, we do not learn from experience, we will learn from reflecting on experience. So we had them reflect on how their life has changed since March of 2020. We watched uh, videos on PBS Learning Media website, different ways people are seeing the positive in all of this. And we looked at a quote from Barack Obama and watched the kid president video, how to change the world, having students think about how they can take what they've experienced and make the world a better place. And Jessica is going to take it from here. Hi, I'm Jessica Gilkey and I teach sixth grade English with Ms. Howlett and Ms. Shepard. Um, so this is our, we will write through this student choice board. Um, we have found a lot of success with choice boards because it builds ownership for our students um, and allows them to display mastery in whichever way they prefer. So as you can see on the right, we let them do a recipe for change. So they could literally write out, you know, ounce of courage, a cup of hope. And then we let them do poems, make lists, what's in, what's out, letters of gratitude. They could write letters to teachers, help their workers, whoever they preferred. Um, they were able to do a drawing or a picture and then write about it. And then a lot of our students are very interested in music. So we let them create a pandemic playlist. Um, so we try to hit on all of our students' interests as much as possible. Um, and then recently we did digital notebooks. So on the left, we were able to allow them to decorate their digital notebooks. As you can see, a lot of them showed their favorite sports or they put their names on their notebooks. And then on the right, we did brainstorming in their notebooks and then had them analyze chapters one and two of a monster calls. And we used a Google um, add-on called Slip and Slide. So this let us add in pages to their notebook every week. Instead of having them create a whole new notebook, we were able to let them add slides and continue building on the notebook. And then these are some examples of our students' work. Um, we give our students opportunities to display their work and show their voice matters, not only by publishing it through on the Young Authors Project, but they were able to show their classmates, um, families. We shared these on our social medias, our Twitter pages, and let them have a voice within our own community. And these are some examples of our fridge-worthy work. It builds a sense of community at Ramsey within our sixth grade academy to have our students share their work with one another. So these are just some examples of recipes for change, um, letters to healthcare workers, teachers, All right, um, this is Ms. Shepard, and I'm going to talk about building relationships through writing. Recently, we did a bio poem and life writing assignment, and while it is tied to standards, it also gets us a chance to build relationship with kids. Um, and you could even make it cross curricular as well. So use your social studies and science teachers as well. Um, with the bio poem, you could make it about the main character of the text you're reading. It could be about a historical figure 
or it could also be about a scientist you are studying as well. So try to build in cross curriculum writing and as well as relationship building through writing. And then also just getting engaged um, through unique units or just making it creative, getting them engaged is going to be really successful to increase that rigor as well. Um, using an anchor text, we created a calendar for the kids so that they know what is upcoming. We have, um, again, choice boards, as Ms. Gilkey had said, um, that way they can demonstrate mastery, but in a way that they want to, creating a simplified rubric. So showing them what does it take to get that four to master that, and then from there on, it's just missing certain components. Um, you also want to alternate between writing workshops and reading assessments. So we don't make them read and write all in one week, because that is a lot. We only see them, at least at our school, twice a week. So we alternate between writing workshops and then a reading assessment as well. Paper up like assessments just to keep that rigor up. And we found a lot of success with that as well. All right. Hi, I'm uh, Pam Coomer and I'm instructional resource librarian at Library Media Services. I'm going to walk you through accessing ebooks for your students. We will start at your school library LibGuide. So if you've never accessed the library LibGuide, begin at the NTI Student Toolkit and select the Online Books in Gale Database icon. And on the next slide, you'll see that you need to select your school and click the link to be directed to your school library LibGuide. If you're not aware of all the resources on the LibGuide, I highly suggest you investigate all the great things that are housed on the LibGuide. Uh, next slide, please. There are two resources provided through Library Media Services with access on the homepage of the LibGuide. First, Abdo Digital Bookshelf provides access to 30 ebooks with simultaneous um, unlimited access. This means that all students can access the same book at the same time, and they are always available. Next slide. The second resource is Gale eBooks. There are approximately 13 reference books with subjects in the arts, history, literature, and social science. These eBooks are also unlimited access. Next slide. On the school library LibGuide, there's a tab titled NTI Online Books and Resources. When you open this tab, you will find the access point to eBooks, on various platforms. I'm going to briefly cover those platforms now. Next slide. Teen Book Cloud is provided through Kentucky Virtual Library and contains eBooks and audiobooks. They have approximately 1,000 unlimited access books. Specific features include enhanced eBooks that provide professional narration with line-by-line -line highlighting. The Common Core Portal provides standards and lists of correlated books and resources available through Teen Book Cloud. National Geographic videos are also available on this platform. Next slide. The EBSCO eBooks K-8 collection is also provided through KYVL and it contains unlimited access eBooks. One of the best features of this collection is access to Spanish language books. There are approximately 158 titles in Spanish. This collection is also integrated with Google Classroom. Next slide. The Sora platform, which is OverDrive, is provided free through the Jefferson County Remote Reading. Access to this free version contains approximately 400 books. The books are single use and students will check out for a 14 day lending period. Specific features worthy of noting include a dyslexic font available for students who need that adaptation. That adaptation. Also, a student's Sora account can be linked to their Louisville Free Public Library card, which provides access to all of the LFPL resources appropriate for the student's age and grade level. 
an instructional video showing how to link Sora and LFPL is linked in this slide by clicking on the LFPL icon. Schools have the option to purchase a subscription to Sora. If your school has this subscription, your students will have access to additional titles. Check with your librarian for more information. Next slide. Mac and VIA also has provided a, pre, a free platform for JCPS. This includes 480 ebooks with unlimited access. The Mac and ebooks have text to speech, which is a great feature for students. Please note that this service is set to expire December 31st. This is another subscription that schools have the option to purchase. And again, I suggest you check with your librarian for more information. Next slide. Our department has an infographic detailing ebook resources available to JCPS students. This is linked on this slide for your reference, but I want to show you some highlights on the next slide. Library World is the access point to your school's library card catalog. You can search for books and ebooks available in your school library. Access to the library libguide is also linked from this document. Information about accessing library cards from LFPL is also listed here. And if you are not familiar with teachingbooks.net, I strongly recommend you take a look. This is a great resource for ELA teachers, especially. Next slide. At the end of last school year, I created summer reading choice boards for middle and high school. I have provided them in this presentation as a frame of reference. I created these boards around genre and provided recommendations based on, if you like this book, try this one. Each recommendation shows which platform the books can be found on. If you have questions about the reading choice boards, you can email me. I would be happy to assist you. Next slide. The next slide is the high school summer reading choice board. So we'll go to the next slide. It's always a good idea to be aware of copyright laws associated with books. This slide links to an extensive list of publishers and their permissions around fair use for read alouds and other usage of books. Next slide. My final advice to you when trying to connect books with students is to ask your librarian for assistance. They are ready and willing to support you and your students in any way possible. Here is a list of questions to get you started. Ask your librarian for login and password information for KYVL, Gale, and teachingbooks.net. Ask your librarian if your school has subscriptions to Sora, Mac and Via, or other digital resources. Ask your librarian to come to your classes and demonstrate how to access ebooks and other digital resources. They are prepared and have the information you and your students need to get through non-traditional teaching and learning. I appreciate you joining us today. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Hallett. Um, just as a wrap up, um, what are the kids saying about reading and writing via NTI 2.0? And you can see some of their quotes here. So I, I accidentally read the whole book. I'm so excited to read in your class. This book is so addicting, I could not stop reading. I love being able to express myself. I love my digital notebook. And some favorite assignments, the bio poem, the book thing we're doing in first period, reading A Monster Calls, life writing. So you can see that they are really engaged with the reading and writing components of NTI. Thank you.